Welcome back. So, this episode is going to be on the region of Western Canada and Alaska. So, last episode we talked about the Rocky Mountain Trench and read a paper that basically refuted a fault based interpretation and proposed. Uh, erosional based pretty much current based water based and gave reasons and we went through that and uh, so we're gonna look at the rest of the region which I spent the day making this image pretty proud of it pretty proud of it so let's go up Alaska North Slope, Brooks Range is here. I thought it would be good to just kind of get a bearing on the territory. So we got Tintina Fault, Rocky Mountain Trench. Or Fault, if uh, we go by the interpretation of why that's there. Uh, Caltag Fault, this whole area here is Kuyukuk, Koyukuk, Koyukuk. That's bounded here, down here, over here. This area is recently accreted. It's uh, not La Rancha. It was added on. So that's of note. Northern or North American plate is what, what pre-existed, which essentially goes up to this boundary, goes over here, includes the, the uh, what's it called? Yukon Tanana Upland, YTU there, which has this, this boundary over here, down along the Denali Fault, over to Intermontane. Uh, this is definitely approximate on the map, by the way, like, I did my best, but I'm sure there's things that are slightly off, and this whole boundary, though, this area is North American plate, as well as over here, so, and anything past the Tintina Fault this way, over here, all this is North American plate. Um, down here, North American Plate, and then Intermontane Terrain is accreted during the Earth's expansion process, as I interpret it, which has the boundary up to the Yukon Tanana Upland, and then along Coast Mountains, as well as pretty much the Tintina Fault and Rocky Mountain from the Trench, and then goes down to even further. I didn't quite do this to the perfect uh, like area. I should have probably made sure to cover the Rockies over here and maybe some of Washington. But if I wanted, I could do that in another map. It's kind of what I was thinking. It's hard to extend the image once I get started. Like I did that up here. Notice it's got some images like cut. This area is a second image. This is a second image. All of this is, is images put together on uh, Photoshop by the photo merge, so it was clean, but then down here I added an image somewhere. It's hard to even tell where, so that's good. And maybe here, across around there. And then uh, some of the ocean as well. Okay. But then the insular terrain is another terrain like the Intermontane. Intermontane came first, and then insular terrain, which includes um, this area over here, this way. Everything, I believe, uh, north of the border range fault here generally through here over this way as well as Alexander terrain is part of inter in insular terrain which comes over here uh, and then Rangelia and then the Yakutat microplate 
which created, uh, I believe, at a later point, and is possibly considered part of intermontane or insular terrain, but also it was separated on the paper I was reading that I got a lot of this information from, where it was late accretion, like the Koyukuk, like, like this area. Hopefully this isn't the same song repeating over and over for an hour. <laughs> it looks like it might be. Sorry. <laughs> uh, and then Great Bear Lake over here. The uh, old, old Crow Flats and Yukon Flats. We got another fault over here that kind of branches off of the Tintina Fault, which continues as the Kaltag Fault, branches off here as the Nixon Fork Itatorid Fault. And then we have the Denali Fault that goes across this way. And some of them, like the, depending on where I got the information, some of them kind of stopped here, others continued all the way across here. I thought it made sense that there was some connection, although um, whether or not, like, that's universally accepted that that structure continues, I'm not sure. Uh, probably not, based on the, how they're drawn. Castle Mountain Fault had, uh, two branches. I think this is also Castle Mountain Fault. Usually, I believe they name them multiple things when there's branches, but, so that might have another name. Aleutian Range, which includes the mountains of Kodiak Island here. Um, this is like Kina Mountain, Mountains, Kenai Mountains. It's the KM, WM is Rangelia Mountains, which is kind of odd because Rangelia Mountains are right up here and then Rangelia is down here, including Vancouver Island and Hida Gwei Island, however that's pronounced. SEM is St. Elias uh, Mountains here, which was pretty much from Rangelia Mountains are here. I believe St. Elias Mountains are generally in this area. Possibly even like most of the mountains here. There's definitely other mountain name in this area. I didn't write that down. This is Chugash Mountains here. Contact Fault in Purple. Notice also the, I believe it's called Strike Slip Fault in a right lateral, where the idea is if you're, if there's a fence across, if there's a fence across the, the two segments at a certain point and it moves, then looking from either side, the fence moved right. So, like, this segment moved right, this segment moved left, relative to it at least. Whether or not that's mostly going left with just stationary relative up here is a question, I would say. But the contact fault is here, goes around, goes over this way underneath Kodiak Islands. And then Prince William terrain is this general area, which might be part of, part of Insular. I'm not completely sure. Um, Chugash St. Elias Fault is, I believe it starts around here and goes this way. Over here, down to this corner. And then this, this is just boxing in the Yakutat. And then Fairweather Fault here which then seemingly continued as something called Queen Charlotte Fault, uh, basically down underneath Vancouver. Uh, sometimes when there were two line segments, it was harder. The faults I tried to draw as continuous lines once I kind of got a pattern going, whereas the boxes of the trains are more dashed lines. Coast Mountains are within this blue, starting somewhere over here, and generally going this way, all the way down to end uh, around Washington. And then the uh, Coastal Shear Zone is 
generally depicted in this area. I couldn't find it exactly on the map to really fine tune it. And then uh, there's, um, what was this called? Richardson Mountains up here. Go just right there. Maybe I'll pull up Google Earth real quick. Apparently there's mountains here called the Richardson Mountains, possibly this as well. And then here going down, we're gonna end over this segment here in this kind of V-shape, right angled V-shape, is called the Ogilvie Mountains. And then uh, this, is all, this is all the Rockies, but I put the particular names. Mackenzie Mountains are further out east. Selwyn Mountains are further west in this area, I believe, like centered on the, where the snow is here. And then Selwyn Basin in this area. Uh, then Laird Basin, named after the river, I believe, here. I believe that's the river, although that might be Mackenzie. This is probably Mackenzie here, river, that I definitely didn't quite connect to. Mackenzie River Basin over here, which is an outlet now, but it was an inlet at the time of Earth's expansion when this was all being shaped. Um, interior planes, it's probably worth looking those up because they're really... Like this image, maybe. Although it's... Let's see if we can find this image. So pretty much start in a... Uh, expanded out to the sides. Here's the Mackenzie Mountains and Selwyn Mountains in that area. So they go around that. They include Great Bear Lake pretty much. At least in this. Uh, I think I've seen it also extend past them. And then go down this way. Down here. And then they importantly fan out into like a, a shape that has like a thumb and a fingers kind of thing or like, like branches off so if we look over here here it's doing that where it's got the shape that branches off and two has a, a main conduit path and then it branches off and, and it has two sides and then here it has a main conduit and then it branches off into two sides around the Idaho batholith so it's similarly doing that around this area, I guess, and going down here, so, which would point to, if what I'm saying is correct, that the inflow of water came basically from the Beaufort Sea here, in through this region, ran into resistance and went around, and just kind of ultimately traveled this way, but then there's there was pressure over here. So it just went along this way, and once it got past the pressure, it started to expand and fan out, and including into the eddy that formed in top Michigan. Fanned out over here and down here. I don't know if it reaches all the way. Yeah, all the way down the whole the whole distance of this blue, pretty much down here, and then over this way to around here, and then back this way. Seemingly having some sort of eye type thing, like the others, like a snake having the snake appearance, eyeball, eyeball. Flathead Reservation eyeball, the Bonneville flood area eyeball, Bonneville, Bonneville. Okay, so then I made a couple other things that I thought I'd share. This was before I really did any of that, where I tried to get an idea. So essentially my interpretation is that a current flow is 
coming from this location near Fiji, modern modern position of near Fiji, where it has effectively like a figure eight structure around it and then like a snow angel kind of structure down here a boundary like a large general boundary and then jet streams so it's been my interpretation that this jet stream went up to like anything to the east went up to North America and ran into North America to create the mid Pacific mountains underneath the continental crust here in this region. So literally like, like this, mind you, this is an expanding earth model. So the continents were much closer. Pacific was closed up. So it was like this. where Western Pacific was physically underneath North America. We can see the Mid-Pacific Mountains there with the nose of the dragon there. So current was flowing up this way from, here's that center point of that figure eight with the current flow going this way, running into the Mid-Pacific Mountains structure, creating it into the resistance, but then going around the resistance, which is not visible in the magnetic anomaly map particularly, although um, essentially my interpretation is that it ran up here. Over time it got up to, it went up and around, but it pushed into here. Mind you, um, these islands were there, if I can get that to come up. So Papua New Guinea was here with the, bond, the bonds that broke, still visible on the ocean floor, and in the shape of Papua New Guinea and Solomon Islands. It's not perfectly aligned, but bond here that, that broke. Uh, North Malaku and Sulawesi, or North Malaku and Sulawesi, were adjacent to California. And then Philippines were adjacent to that up here, which were all on the western coast of, of Australia, including Borneo. Is pretty sure about that too including Borneo, all these were along the boundary. This one's a little tricky overall to like fit in to this scheme of things, but essentially current flow that flowed from that point in Fiji went this way along the, uh, what was relatively the Eastern boundary of the islands, but some of it got into the islands all of the islands, Papua New Guinea, and as well as regions of Baja, California. <clears throat> and it took materials from these islands and Baja, California, and it transported it up here where it deposited it as the uh, intermontane terrain, and then subsequently as the insular ter terrain in all of these, so Rangelia down here, the intermontane terrain, insular terrain, I guess some period of time passed between so that they were like distinguishably different and when the, the insular terrain came in with Alexander terrain here, it collided and for some reason induced a suture zone and, and these the coast mountains between the intermontane and the insular terrain and then Yakutat. But then this, this jet stream that was running in here ended up going up here. Interestingly, uh, if I just go like this, 
and kind of like draw a straight line along this boundary and then just kind of go up here like it's I even put it to the side a little bit if I put it more like exactly at this location it's very much in line with the coastline of California like there's some relationship which got me thinking maybe like each of there's another straight stretch here maybe that points at something relevant over here like this boundary where this is like let's do that let's just let's start down at around the corner here and then go up to this corner and just see what it looks like relatively in line again certainly it looks like I could go a little further to the like this way maybe even further <clears throat> but it looks like perhaps the region here kind of limits how far Alaska f formed outward without becoming more oceanic crust of, in appearance like having a continental shelf <clears throat> like this current passed and went over here and eroded more where anything over here it kind of like kept over there and helped participate in the accretion process of other currents pushing material in because there's definitely currents flowing through here of water water-based currents mind you this is probably water-based too that's physically so intense because it's like a it's basically like a quasar like a fractal system that was here including the Hawaii the sphere of Hawaii was there so if we go I know how ridiculous I sound sometimes but it is what it is if we go here and look at this maybe like this so I took the big island of Hawaii and shifted it notice two and two are still like this is two this is two and three and three three and three three and three are actually in the same spot because it's just turned so it's over here but then two and two one and one six and six five and five and then up here i took this these three islands only doing the the actual islands of Hawaii and in, including the surrounding like seamount of the islands and combine them and curiously like the dimensions fit I measured the boundary in one of my videos or several we went through this kind of thing measured the boundary see my playlist of Hawaii um, it's the same length as the sides of the island of Hawaii of the big island of Hawaii and then measured the distance along this and it's the same length as the distance along this this and then one spot which I don't mark in this one but in this one is 15 15 15 15 is where all of the um points were together so it, was, it literally was a sphere that was also brought north it was brought from that location down here that was actually went before the earth expanded over basically right here brought from this location up this way over through here and made its way to here uh, in the process where then it essentially stayed there until it had an opportunity to roll back and then 
got caught in currents that that and probably just the pre-existing oceanic crust were providing resistance that whereas other stuff was uh forming <clears throat> pa it pa it passed these currents is what it was that's what it was where this wave and another wave i felt like a wave here too these are forming by current flows and once it passed that boundary across here so like from here to over here it passed that that point and then it turned at an angle and then turned again a little bit like right here it turned a bit this is not the same angle like if we keep going this way it goes more like this so it turned again here and then a huge sphere that was bigger than the islands of Hawaii had all its outer shell deposited initially and then it continued to deposit until it reached over here where its inner core broke apart into the islands of Hawaii and the it was essentially like a fractal planet that was composed of earth materials and had magma contained within its spherical structure that is still contained in the Mauna Loa region of the big island where the other islands have detached from the magma source so they're extinct relatively speaking but so it brought current up this way pushed materials into North America here <clears throat> and then pushed at some point it started to push into this corner and the shape around it is a result of a flow going northward so that's what this is a flow going this way in through here also notice this is pointing at Denali Denali is the tallest point in North America I found that of interest like to the process it definitely relates at the at, at the chakra of this structure is denali so like, that's interesting hmm. uh, which then seemingly influences a current that's going across so there's current coming in up here from the, um the mckenzie river basin area that some of it flows over to the west to apply based on this structure. So if we if we look here, there's relatively a gap in like a current flow path. So current didn't just go in here, it also took a side route over here through this channel that it like re prevented from forming mountains in the pressures so it flowed through but then it's flowing into other currents that are flowing across and it ended up producing mountains here at a boundary so it came in here and wrapped around is kind of what i was thinking and generally filled this area over here with pressure so that pressure plus this current going down and wrapping around this way. And probably some of it went over here into this area and drained through back along this way and pushed in this boundary because of this boundary. So it kind of squeezed through and extended this boundary here. <clears throat> so that's what this white is. Whereas, mind you, as I point out here, tentative water current bands, because it's possible based on some things that they're not actually going the same direction like this one, just reasonably, if there's a current going this way and another current going the same way directly adjacent to it, that's basically part of the same current, kind of doing a finger structure where it's got like a conduit that branches into branches that are like adjacent still relatively like fingers then even if it's doing that it may not have the pressure against one another to 
create mountains. So it's possible that the reality is is that this pink one is going outward <clears throat> and applying a pressure into the the aqua one, which is then lifting up mountains between them and having a channel form where it then goes down the channel. The aqua one cuts across here, kind of where it's straight, it just cuts it through across into the resistance, but because it's traveling straight, a, a branching current branches off here. Where most of it goes northward. And then another current seemingly goes in across this way, at this yellow boundary. And pushes out like a, a boundary over here and then a boundary down here as well as like bending a bit maybe not the yellow one exactly but I kind of just tied it to the yellow one that then branches off this way to go underneath into the cell wind basin I believe it's called into that area so then filling pressure there and then this green current pushing through this to get into this region where then it branches off to the sides and goes left and down around that way and then right through so it cuts through the aqua current that goes up runs into resistance because it's not just the Mackenzie River Basin the currents coming through this current over here that's generally flowing this way and flowing in but also just like off of here applying a pressure so it goes up towards that but runs into the pressure and bends back essentially so it bends back as this aqua boundary that then leads to the Tintina fault boundary and then down here to the Rocky Mountain trench uh, boundary whereas this purple branches across so if we go down here there's like a boundary here you can kind of see going across from this <clears throat> so it's like whatever's going on in here had pressure flowing in so it exhausted at two places one of which kind of created a boundary across here over here into this region <clears throat> or the other one across here generally to like right here in this region <clears throat> I don't know if that's <clears throat> like perfectly fitting because it seems to have affected the whole area to create like a region rather than like a strip across and a strip across kind of thing although over here it does look like it was more potent so it might have gone over the mountains as well <clears throat> and just generally applied a force so the current could flow across here into over here and then bent off of the white current and the pressure of around Hudson Bay and went back down across this way down across though so if we continue like down here this path and out venting out here and then um, this path maybe over this way down and then going running into the area of the trench where it notably doesn't go straight it kind of goes over and then continues it seems <clears throat> and then it looks like it bends back like it doesn't keep bending more this way it starts to bend back and like struggle through so it's possible in this area there's some current going back up that way that's generally coming from down here because this has an upward current that then just like extends perhaps into this region at least in, at times maybe not the whole process but at times extending up here to kind of hold this region at least 
holding the pressure in this region. If not actually physically flowing in, just holding the pressure so it's not as mobile. Like, but things can't cut through as easily because it's occupied. <clears throat> and then uh, over here, I drew a red one that goes up to up to the border uh, Brooks Range, up to here, and then around this way and down this way. And generally across, I don't know exactly. I think I just kind of figured maybe over here and here. And I noticed this, if we go here, like this is coming this way and then runs into like a nucleus region and another type region that has some sort of branching off structure which maybe is because there's a counter pressure, so it's kind of dividing the current. And then it wraps around to create the structure here. But it doesn't like get through. It, maybe it gets through, but it, it doesn't look like it. At least not completely in like this kind of way. Or, or like this kind of way. <clears throat> Whereas this one is probably a current coming from the Fiji structure that's emitting a jet stream that cuts through here and then runs into resistance up here. So if we go back to, say, this image, where this current is going through, the Alexander terrain abruptly jumps like it goes it's all straight here like right along the Denali fault I believe that's still it might have another name where it bends but it's got a certain boundary there in this region that's abruptly shifts over here like it doesn't just continue in a more regular shape it abruptly starts over here <clears throat> Which would probably point to just generally pressures on this side pushing where on this side the current flow from pushing from the north from the currents come flowing through this way pushing on this region to hold it more where current flow here kind of segments a chunk off that it can more easily push into it's, it's applying more pressure to and just like smears it out and pushes it against this area I don't know the geology like thoroughly to really compare everything I'm saying directly. I've certainly looked at this a lot, but there's so many details to like be able to recall spontaneously is a little tricky. Um, so then seemingly this green current runs into resistance enough that it branches off like a side current goes this way. It runs up here into resistance of this little like elbow nook. Like runs into the elbow, pushes the arm to bend it. While on the other side, this current is pushing the arm to bend it. So it go the current bends down this way between the pressures of an upward and southward, a northward or southward flowing currents. And that uh, leads to a current going between them because it was going uh, west to east, at least modern earth, west to east. <clears throat> it wasn't going south, so it's not like one with the current going south, even though it goes south, it also goes southeast, so still at an angle. So it doesn't quite go in the direction this current is. Also, this interestingly is relatively opposite to here. So like if there's some cross interaction across all the way from over here, pressures that manage to influence over here, it's almost like a balance point that then it skips over here to this balance point and is then 
applying outward pressures, like flowing forward, running into resistance, so it branches to the sides, kind of like a splash going in all directions, where then the current flow largely goes over this way, down here, seemingly along the trench, I forget what it's called, the Aleutian Trench maybe, along the trench, forming this boundary where currents are pushing into it and maybe even moving Hawaii literally from like over here, like it collides up here and then rolls in the current or maybe like here and rolls in the current over to this corner where then it rolls down this way later on if not just right when it reached it because it was out of the pressure of this jet stream and over there then maybe it just started to roll because it did it did start to form the uh, emperor seamounts up here at i believe like 81 million radiometric dating Mind you, this is all a global flood, and not a, radiometric dating is only good for relative ages uh, until we account for the abruptness of this process and how it is not uniformitarianism that's at play, but catastrophic processes of literally the f global flood where the currents are still imprinted throughout the entire globe. So the, these are some currents we got going on. Okay, what else we got? Then, uh, maybe I'll go up here real quick. I noticed, definitely noticed this in the past, but just generally, like it looks like a chakra. So anyone who doesn't know what a chakra is, chakra of a shalagram. And uh, I even purposely chose this shalagram because it can't be caused by fossilization, disproves science. Let's go to that one, 305. Shallograms, I have many shallogram videos analyzing them. They cannot be the result of fossilization. Here's an example where the so-called fossil, the shell of the fossil is in this plane but the shell of the fossil is also in this plane where we can see the boundary. This is the, sh the this over here. This side is right here. So it formed an ammonite structure back this way at an angle in the, in the stone because of current flows that for some reason didn't fit almost it seems so it kind of like s squeezed up here in some weird way where it came off of like the peak of the chakras up this way it did a strange shape here that it also strange shapes over here and then it went up this way down here notice it just kind of boop straight off the top on this side <clears throat> cross that way, but then abruptly having this mass up here. It's not like it broke and shifted in some weird way. It's perfectly positioned, hinged. Uh, there's countless examples. Well, maybe you count able to be counted examples of shallograms that cannot be fossils. Uh, let me find couple other examples like this one this one this structure so th this is so this is a suture pattern that would be found found on an ammonite but first oddity is it's curved inward and then this pattern clearly is connected over here and seemingly is connected through here and if we go to one 145. I could scroll faster, but this pattern with the suture pattern on the other side continues as a wave structure. That wave structure 
is very common <clears throat> in shallograms in the ammonite structure. So like, I guess <clears throat> if we just go to the one we were looking at even, not, not this one, but 305. This one, a wave structure. So it's doing this connected to a suture pattern on a rock that it wraps around entirely. <clears throat> There's no way a piece of ammonite led to that stone. The structure on it cannot be the parts of an ammonite. They're not actually positioned in a way that they form on ammonites. They're positioned in a way that current flows can induce the structure. Um, another example, maybe. Like this one. There's an ammonite that can. The structure continues over here. But on the end of the structure of the, like, outer mass of the ammonite is a chakra, like the center of an ammonite forming here that has lines in the stone around it, really pointing to that it is a chakra. But then this one has current flows that went out this way that are not related to the chakra. They're just kind of pointing. I mean, they were part of how it formed, but they're not in the actual chakra's patterns. They're linear, parallel to one another. Here's another one where it's just etching the lobes etching an ammonite structure behind the chakras that it hasn't yet formed, etching lobe over here. Okay, see my shallogram videos for more information. If you're not, like, I'm picking up on what I'm putting down, but willing to hear. So, this chakra also, I guess it's worth continuing a bit. Um, let's go to top this one 287 or maybe let's go to this one where is it it's pretty soon this one <clears throat> so when a shallogram forms generally speaking a unless it's already more solid, then sometimes it etches into a more solid material, but frequently the current flows at play are water-based that contain shale, they contain pyrite, they contain quartz. They take these materials and compress them by pressures, the highly pressurized water currents, pressure or push the materials together, but they don't just flow around it, they flow through it so that then they, they essentially start out by forming like a, a, a generally more spherical structure, but over time they compress it to make it more elongated and that leads to current flow flowing down from the top of the elongated structure down through the center through what then becomes the chakras passes through the chakra into the bottom chakra where then it fans out in all directions in the resistance below it forming a base and then that base fills up with pressure so that it is able to overflow back into the pressure downward into the into the structure it pushes against it and because it's pushing against it it for, it preferentially forms a conduit. It doesn't just overflow everywhere. It overflows in a channel that it then flows over the top of the structure where it then reaches the point that it's flowing through the stone, through the material, and recycles the same material from the base back through the chakras and just cycles like, like a cosmic structure does because it's a fractal galaxy in essence that chakra or shallograms really are 
and part of why they're amazing is because they're fractals of really cool things. So to be able to hold one and look at it frozen in stone is really revealing when we recognize they're not just fossils because analyzing them from the angle of fossils doesn't have any of these potentials to see what's actually going on that by recognizing them for what they actually are as current induced structures by highly pressurized water currents then we can see more so what's actually going on okay so <clears throat> again this looks like a chakra looks like a chakra and if we go to the magnetic anomaly map looks like a chakra generally here up this way is the north terminal of the earth which is also shallogram like so if I go again to animations, shallogram earth here. North terminal. Just like that. So I'll pull up the, the shallogram here in a second. Okay, let me pull up that shallogram. This one. So really significantly, it's not just this structure that we see in, in like a generally uh, homogenous rock. It has actual uh, arms, like a galaxy, that extend out. They seem to fade over here, but then they continue here. Go around, distinctly wrap outward. There's another one here. You can see them there. Wrapping around the structure. So if we go back to here, if this is essentially the same as this, this like compressed mass with a void region around it, compressed mass, this high intent magnetic intensity region with void around it. And then go down this way, follow down this way. There's a boundary that we can see. Generally wrapping around here, over here, over here, and then on this side, back this way, over this way, over here, this way, this way, and then generally going up to the north terminal so there's one of those types of things going on on earth as there is on that shallogram because again they're not really fossils but if we kind of align this I mean, it's not exactly pointing at it, but it looks like, like if I go to this shallogram here, the chakra with the steps upward, chakra with steps downward, and then a nucleus that's literally a sphere in this one, or at least what's visible of it is a sphere. So it's almost like the North Terminal is like a nucleus that this system had a chakra that was injecting energy through this area. And then a terminal that was like a nucleus. Well, I didn't look over here. Possibly this side is like the base where then the current comes out of like if we go over here There's certainly current coming out of 
out of this area that then branches out to the side and goes around. Like it's running into resistance as we approach here. So it's very much doing the through the chakra, through the nucleus, through the other chakra, where then it fans out in a base. I don't really see necess necessarily another chakra here. Um, like in this region. I mean, there's certainly like in a different plane, there's like an ammonite structure here that has like a nucleus area here that includes the area of Mijon, Thor's hammer impact. That music must be a little boring, huh? Same song over and over. I hate when they do that. I look for an hour of video, click it, start playing it, and then I realize they just repeated the same song, so it might as well have been a five minute video. I don't want a five minute video that repeats over and over. There's another one. So this one's interesting also. Like if we look here, there's a, a ring, a ring structure here that's under, the center is under Russia. And it's got like an eyeball, but it's got like an eyeball with this little path. If we follow over here, it very much looks related to over here. Like there's a relationship for sure between this area and what's going on in the area we're looking at. Also, I found this really interesting right here. So if current's going this way, it looks like it bends and goes down. But then here, this is between it right here, it looks like the current is going, it's getting squeezed between like pressures over here and pressures over here because there's pressure putting, pushing up. There's a band of current that's actually making it through the pressure to go down this way. But then there's a, uh, there's pressure up here in general that's flowing into this region and going across, running into resistance here, and bending this way. But then some of it bends up, it seems, and wraps around here and fills this area with a, like a swirling uh, pressure zone, which probably is why this ended up going through a small channel where it created this region here, but then this flow was directed this way through a relatively small channel, where then at some point, instead of wrapping around the terminal, it went this way, cut through between Canada and Greenland, and opened the space between them, is what I would say that participated in. And then what didn't go that way, though, it branched off. So that's kind of similar to Alaska that we saw. Here, where a current's flowing along this boundary and going up this way. But some of it just goes straight through right here. So we can see the way this is and the way this is. is kind of parallel, but with a space. So current's flowing through here this way. while like the bulk of the current flows through this width up this way crosses this other entry point current that's cutting more so across this way and interacts in this area that's then considered part of the Denali fault, fault line. But here it's doing very much the same, where it's going across and up, but branching off of this straight current path that then bends off this way. Probably because currents are flowing across from over here through Greenland and like applying a pressure so it doesn't just go straight, it ends up bending down and then out. Past, 
past this pressure like across here even though the pressure is down here too but it's more so where it's re really low blue is where high currents are flowing so currents flowing this way through this high blue magnetic anomaly low intensity across into Greenland before it, the continents broke apart substantially and then pushing this other current down and around it where then it goes out over here but then some of it continues straight which seemingly just goes across into this area in part but some of it like bends so it almost creates like a bending point of this material here something that, that it bends off of and goes more so this way some of it goes straight maybe it goes across this way into here and interacts with current going up this way and around flowing into here so some current goes that way other current goes this way this runs into resistance and bends and then it bends into that current bends around and wraps in forming the Kursk magnetic anomaly but then some of it continues this way it spirals in here and opens this gap which then seemingly like extended outward maybe spiraled in and then as it like reached a certain size it was able to then spiral out and extend over here to create this like larger ammonite structure that pushes this boundary but continues through well, it's kind of hard to turn this continues through here over here kind of creating this boundary opening that gap where it's less intensity less intensity through running into resistance and going up here this goes all looks like this really extends even out here and some of it gets like broken off into this segment too maybe ends up flowing back through this area as like an outlet and it ends up going generally across to feed back over into this area creating that like this type of structure I don't have it open anymore this type of thing to the north pole of the earth to literally make a North Pole. And I got some more. Did this, did this. Okay. Let's do this. Then I just kind of was looking at shapes. Like, hmm, maybe not quite as interesting, but in, in view of what we were just talking about, this is kind of interesting. So let's look at some shallogram lobes let's see it doesn't quite look like it's pointing at the area we're looking at like it they tend to curve away from the nucleus hmm feel like there's something to, like this. This isn't good enough. Just something like that. The way this shape is, is very typical. Alright, maybe we need some with some details. There's, de there's details that I thought 
we're paralleled the structures. So we kind of need details, not just a flat surface. Maybe maybe this one. Let's go with that one. So this one just got at the center, a like generally. So let me just go over here. So we're not looking at my image. So I made a boundary here along this down to essentially here, but extended it down here generally and across this way and then back up and around here and then just kind of, it doesn't quite connect through over here, but I like follow these legs in that row generally. kind of give it like a symmetrical structure and then interestingly all of that is exactly pointing at this bend like a pressure point which then has a large structure here that I drew maybe through there wrapping generally around here almost like some relationship, some reason, I don't know. But this one looks, if we go back to this image, crap, I have so many images. The way it bends is much more like happening over there, pointing to like a nucleus region at Hudson Bay, rather than um, towards the chakra over here. Because that's kind of what I thought was interesting, is there's a chakra over here, and then some, like, shallogram features out this way. So then there's, um, so that's one, but where the center has a circle, so maybe I could find... Haven't even talked about some of those yet. Like circle, generally centered in terms of like this way, centered. Definitely with some better examples, but that's good enough. So that's kind of what that reminded me of in that one. And then there's this one, which just is bigger. It's generally the same boundary over here, but then with like a more of that curvature to like the curvature, um, the curvature, oops, I'm covering that, the curvature here, sorry if I was covering any previous stuff and didn't realize, so it's reminiscent of that curvature, maybe even with that curvature, either, either way, like it could be either, kind of, where this side could be more so related to that side. Or or because of the Hudson Bay, it's kind of hiding some details, but like this here, this structure kind of reminded me of what's going on there. So if we go back here, so generally a center area and then a larger boundary around it out this way. But then we can see like a boundary going across here that has an inward and around. Very much reminiscent of um, the chunk. The old chunk. This thing. Just reminds me of that thing, but here, that thing, so if we go back, kind of reminiscent of um, this thing 
here. And then over here, there's, interestingly, this one has, like, a less detectable thing going on there. And then over here, I kind of, I tried to look for a symmetry, the opposite. Like, in this overall structure, maybe there's a symmetrical structure. So I kind of see something going on here. And kind of something going on, generally. That's maybe not exactly opposite in the structure, but reminiscent enough that I maybe it's related to something of that nature. And we see that thing there also. Maybe like that thing. And then around its boundary, we've got these little in and out type stuff going on here, like feet, like these things. So it's definitely got characteristics to a point where it's like, that's odd. And another one there, I think I might have pointed that one, whichever one I didn't point at, and down there, down there. Very, this, this right here, this segment is very reminiscent of the ones that have like a corkscrew structure like this. Let's find a good, good one. Starting here and across. And then having bigger nub things as it passes around. But then over here, I don't really see it. So it almost looks like it only has part of it pointing back at the Hudson Bay. So kind of everything that we're looking at more so points to the Hudson Bay as like a having a shallogram lobe out this way and maybe another one out this way that it is not really visible maybe it was uh, forming in the ice or something that didn't quite imprint so well on the earth I don't know then an even bigger one this one generally point at, at uh, Great Bear Lake, I believe it was called, that then goes across this way and has a boundary around these mountains, boundary, and then goes over this way to that area, this is not so defined in this area, but then uh, this boundary here, which is generally the in, inside of that structure we were just looking at, down along the lake, so... If we turn this, mind you, at this point, pressure and there's a shock right here. There's kind of a shock right here also. Like maybe this is like a nucleus area well, in some like different system that doesn't quite involve the north terminal structure where there's like a, another chakra or maybe even that is kind of its chakra. But across this way, like right this way is where that corner is so if there's a current flowing through and then fanning out this way creating path that way that cuts through here over this way generally speaking also having larger boundaries but across here through here and then along this thing the flame the living flame of ice i believe i talked about in one episode i called it to this area to then go back through over here, maybe through this way even. And then wrapping back around along the edge of these lakes to the beginning point. So it's kind of another lobe there. And it, at the center again, it has ammonite-esque things. Like if we go to like this, it's like missing, maybe not this one. Maybe this isn't the best one to compare. I don't know if anything really looks exactly like Hudson Bay kind of thing, but... Um, I'm 
trying to think if there's examples. Maybe um, let's go to this one. This proves science. This one. It's like an opening in the middle. So it can happen where there's a lobe and then an erosional opening in the lobe that's kind of centered, so it's not just forming like this perfect structure over here. It actually has an opening through the center. I'm not sure if I can think of any other ones that are doing that off the top of my head. Looking, I don't see any that on this folder that have that. That's okay. Good enough. So some kind of opening there for that one. Then I just thought this was an odd structure to not be like somehow related, like this boundary that would through the lake slow, like through the center of the lake there, around, around here. And then it has this back thing this way where it divides from Greenland. And then over here, if we just kind of connect across to the boundary of Hudson Bay, go back and then follow through all the way through this path through here and just connect so between the islands here and then over and then along this boundary it's got and this even this also has like a secondary structure where it has a boundary up this way a turn and then a boundary that starts there and kind of dot 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 continues over to there to this corner where this goes this way into this corner from this corner and then a generally central area of something. It almost looks like a spaceship or something. I don't know. And then where the rest of uh, this area over here is very relatively like symmetrical esque to Greenland and even has like a body of water relatively there and there with one between them at between like below this structure. So there's probably something, I don't know what to make of this one. It it kind of reminds me, honestly, of the top one that I was about to look at earlier. This one kind of reminds me of this one. That didn't pop up. I know I got many images. I think if I turn this, kind of reminds me of this. Almost as if there's like an actual top here where water drained through Hudson Bay as like a chakra. Like this was overlaying the chakra that was at Hudson Bay in some way that this structure is like a top of a ammonite of a shallogram above the ammonite top piece that drains through the structure into the chakra, through the chakra. Like it kind of gave me that vibe looking at it. I don't know, just a thought. And then I also noticed this, like coming from that same point over there, instead of like following this and having this boundary, I just kind of have like a far boundary that is it this boundary, the edge of the continental shelf, but then continuing across, or maybe the edge of the where islands are, or land is specifically continuing across into essentially where the Appalachians are, and then another line going across here, which really goes to where the Mississippi formed, which is here. This purple line or whatever, fuchsia, and then Mississippi, and then Appalachians, boundary, and then just follow this way. And there's generally a structure there back to there, and then following through these lakes and along the boundary here, and then just kind of cutting across here. There's not really anything, but maybe that's related to this structure there so it kind of gave me like a fanning out vibe like a current flowing through here that fans out across this width and continues to fan out and just 
reaches across this whole structure to then interact with all the other currents and just be like a part of the process that maybe interacted with the Appalachians. I don't know if it was really related to the Appalachians. Appalachian orogeny day ages. Like if there's a, I don't think there's any late, like re, more recent. So it almost seems not related, but it might be like the presence of the Appalachians might have played into how everything else was in terms of where it fanned out, where the structure formed and everything, so that it did fan out in a way that this kind of interaction was at play. And then uh, uh, similar to the top looking one, where if we look at over here at these Denmark, Sweden, Finland maybe, over here, that the, at the snake structure is really blatant that has a, again, chakras and lobe, even, even with it up, up again, and then up there opposite, and then a smaller lobe, and then another lobe over here with a drainage out of the tip, which shallograms do. So it has this shallogram ammonite structure, but then it has like a snake head that has a snake body that kind of wraps around overall, that then is opposite. So it has this mouth, open mouth. So this kind of has an open mouth. Just something that currents do. So I remember earlier that interior planes went to this open mouth over here. And then over here, an open mouth. And then over here, an open mouth coming this way. It's kind of interesting. That looks like a fish eyeball. Like a fish. Maybe a fin. Something. Whatever. I never noticed the fish aspect of that, I don't think. I don't think, maybe. But then there's like a boundary here. Boundary here. So if we kind of just follow this boundary to here and then wrap around this side to this mouth open and kind of create one structure there and then say, well, maybe opposite over this way, down around this channel and around, and then there's an opening and then there. And then in this case, it has this structure kind of reminiscent of how it has that structure. So that's what's going on in this one is there's this like trifecta of similar structures that when the continents were closer, Greenland was up in there, and then this was adjacent to Greenland. So it's much more related to these. So it looks like it was kind of like these three formed together, and this one broke away and in part of the process, leaving these two and Greenland more attached to these two, but it's spaced a little bit even. With like a shared electron maybe even between. Mind you this here, if we go back here, I'll stop soon I think mouth of the there's the snake head there's the mouth but there's here's that current path going across here that goes basically right in front of the mouth across there as like a boundary so there's current going in front of the mouth across this way to cut over here But then it fills pressure over here and ends up going down here more so. Let's see. There's current going through here seemingly. So if we go back here, current going through like this way, was it? Seemingly. So going through this way. 
So this one has an actual current coming out of the open mouth for some reason. What this all means uh, exactly where this one has a current going into its mouth from Hudson Bay, like this scorpion shape where currents are flowing into Hudson Bay and then out through a jet stream here that creates this flame structure that it etches in here. Also, some petals, like Hudson Bay, petal, petal, petal out this way, petal, generally, petal here, so like flower petals, where over here, kind of like a petal, petal down there too like there's different petals uh, the things we just looked at are kind of reminiscent of the petals around this supposed impact crater which clearly is not because it has circular features all around it and or just like structured features reminiscent of it similar to it where it formed in the currents this formed in the currents, these formed in the currents. We talked about impacts, global impacts a lot. Uh, see one of my recent videos on the Bedouin crater, for instance, is probably a good one. I don't know what it was called, something I was talking about, an impact strike. I think it was a Permian Triassic one. I think I called it something like that. Let's see. Let's see, what did I call it? Your videos. Earth shattering impacts, this one. So, impact structures are also current induced. All of this stuff is current induced, both above and below the crust. Magnetic anomaly maps tend to. Details tend to be more below the crust, although over here is really interesting because it seems to have a current flowing over this way directly to Yellowstone, which is here along this boundary, here to Yellowstone, pointing to some like relationship because this has a current flowing over to Yellowstone through Flathead Reservation and really continuing over to Yellowstone. So it's possible there were both, there was so much current here that it went like sideways almost and cut through like at a depth to the moho to the mantle cross boundary where the current was kind of going sideways through all the layers though and down to the moho whereas over here these features are not one to one like we don't see those features here really we see something going on but we don't see those features really which would point to, which is common, like there's a lot of places, like for instance the mantle puncture hole here, this is not visible in the eastern Pakistan. And here's Sarashtra Peninsula in India. Here's the peninsula. No sign whatsoever of that structure. Oh, I guess maybe. Maybe here, like the way this is. Now, if the, if it's there, I never noticed it, so it looks like maybe there might be some type of relationship to that structure visible here going around this way. But it's way more subtle, and lots of times it's just not visible through the layers, kind of like uh, air currents on Earth through like the from all the layers of Earth's air flows there go, we go here I like this depth like we don't see this here but we see it here and interestingly this is going this way this one is going the opposite direction underneath it. If we go here, this is going this way, 
and down across. Interesting. And this is also going this way, so it can do either. It doesn't necessarily do opposite across layers, but then it's going back the other way here and through. So like this, this is a very good example of what the currents are doing that we're looking at and doing things of this nature just through the Earth's crust in a way that it's shaping the entire Earth with highly energetic current flows that are just not happening anymore. The Earth is now at a new equilibrium. It was at an equilibrium. It expanded to a new radius, and then it's at a new equilibrium. It's not still expanding. It has since stabilized. But these the currents that flowed are very much like this, which is why there's like eddies, like these eddy spots are not just there, they're like in the Colorado Plateau, and there was one above Hudson Bay, there was one above Michigan, and water-based, uh, there are all sorts of sizes, all fractal sizes, they're cross scales, there's like the these things up here going around this swirl in here okay guys uh, I think that's all I got to say for now I did come across one one thing maybe I can just real quick this I I was looking for Rocky Mountain videos recently. I've been looking for Alaska videos because of on lectures to really get like a technical discussion. And this one, which I'll link, I guess I'll, I'll just link it. This one, which was given by Eric Urslev, and I definitely summarize it, but it ended up being not a bound. So if we look at this. Rocky Mountain Formation. It was about Bighorn Mountain and Basin, which are two of my focuses. Mind you, Bighorn Mountain is right here at the center of this huge ring structure directly adjacent to Yellowstone that are like coupled to one another, like Mauna Loa and Mauna Kea. Dense, cold, Bighorn next to hot magmatic Yellowstone coupled together. It was about this. And he he was talking about how it could have happened. And he pointed out that the surface details are different than the the deep details compared to the Moho. Uh I believe this is the moho. This is the surface. Totally different. We talked about how this happened in. I feel like I got sound going. Oh, sorry. It's like, what is that? We talk about how this happened in threads of the pattern, and timing is everything, these two. So we talked about this very recently. This, how current flows that closely related to what we're talking about today entered into this area and formed the Bighorn Basin, but also formed Bighorn Mountain. And uh, why the difference in Laramide and Moho fold, fold surfaces? And then he shows, uh, I believe this is the Moho and uh, seismic data maybe. So there's a sedimentary structure and basin in this black that goes way down. So it's much more like to depth, like a huge chakra, like a mountainous chakra that just barely sticks through the crust that goes down to the moho, like how it's this, how it's here versus over here with all the red, it's still like that down to the moho. Literally goes from the moho to Bighorn Mountain proper in this chakra structure. 
And he said, um, down here, or no, did I not include it? I got so many images of it. That's another talk I watched. Also included the magnetic anomaly map. Here's the magnetic anomaly map. We can kind of see the rings. I was like, I think I, I commented. Uh, it's worth scrolling out <laughs> when looking at the magnetic anomaly map. But he essentially he says the folding and faulting and uh, the way Bighorn formed if we can find this slide needed both compression highly pressurized currents compressing and fluids water he literally is like water is a major part of this process he it's a he attributes it to the subduction of the pacific plate underneath north america bringing water that then under pressure like squeezes the water out that then leads to upwelling of the water in the region of bighorn that then contributes to providing water so that the, t the detachment from pressure could allow for sliding that then leads to crustal de detachment in the area but the point is water and compression are parts of bighorn formation process see my other video <laughs> or videos that i just mentioned these ones for some more details on why that's amazing that there's actually even in plate tectonics invoking water i love it all right guys i'm Audi. thanks for hanging out appreciate it see you next time